automated alerts are essential to uh, monitoring. Um, and Datadog offers the tried and true threshold alerts. So um, there's, you know, you have an, a threshold here at 1.5K, and you hit that, things go downhill apparently. And they're, um, they're very effective for detecting many types of issues in your infrastructure and applications. Um, but there, there are situations where threshold uh, alerts are impossible to set properly. And so for these things, we have algorithmic alerts. To auto, um, with using algorithmic alerts, you can automatically identify abnormalities. So um, in some cases, maybe you only care if, some, if, if, you, if a group of hosts acts differently as a group, um, acts differently from the rest of the group in comparison to their peers, right? And so for something like this, you don't actually care how they react to a predetermined threshold, rather if they're acting on the, off on their own. And so for something like this, outlier detection is perfect. And a prototypical use case is like hosts under a load balancer. Other types of alerts where thresholds don't work very well are user-driven user metrics. So these are um, metrics that have fluctuating baselines, or maybe they just have periodic patterns. And for metrics like these, it's, if you try to do uh, threshold alerts, you're just gonna suffer from false alarms. And so for this, we have anomaly detection. And um, we're gonna use like the past behavior of the data, and if it's different from its historical precedent, that's when we alert. So anomaly de detection is great for things like uh, spikes in user traffic or um, finding dips in trending metrics, even if those dips would have been normal just a couple days ago. And so um, on the right metrics, both outlier detection and anomaly detection are gonna give you much higher quality alerts than threshold alerts. And of course, as uh, suggested by Alexi in his Monitoring 101 guide, um, you actually only wanna alert if you're alerting on a symptom that's one real, two requires attention, and three is urgent. But what if you wanna be alerted uh, before there's actually a problem? So actually, um, the guide actually has an exception to the rule for early warning signs. And so the classic example is disk space. So um, unlike running out of like memory or CPU, if you run out of disk space, your system's just gonna die. And um, when we look through the monitors that our users have set up, one of the most popular ones are monitors on disk space and with a threshold of like 80% or 90%. And so then the idea is that once the alert triggers, you're gonna clear some logs or you're gonna reset your cache or just delete data that ex exists somewhere else. And so here we have an example of a disk that's hit 90% uh, and alert went off. And it's actually, it's pretty hard to tell if this is urgent or not. Um, and then say like, also depends on the disk space, right? A uh, disk size, um, depending on the size of the disk, who knows if you have weeks or months or days or hours. Um, a less dire use case might be um, trying to figure out when you're gonna have that party at Conrad's house when you finally hit that five million user mark. So um, what really we want is uh, predictive alerts, right? We wanna be able to tell you, hey, your disk is gonna fill up in a week, or maybe you should buy the guac now. You're gonna hit five million users by tomorrow at 2 p.m. So how are we gonna predict the future? Well, luckily we already have some very good time series models. So for um, anomaly detection, the way we determine a point, if a point is anomalous or not, is we predict the next point, and then compare it to the actual point, and then see um, if it's anomalous based on the distance between the two. But what if we predict that next point, feed that back into the model, predict the next point after that, feed that back into the model, and so on and so forth. So we can easily turn our um, anomaly detection algorithms to forecasting ones. And so this works really well with seasonal metrics, and um, now you can know when the party at Conrad's house should be. But, um, Sophisticated time series models are really great and all, but sometimes you just wanna draw a line through a metric and extend that line into the future. And so for the most common use case for uh, system disk usage, that's pretty much like what you wanna do, right? Draw a simple line and that's extended and that's what you want. Uh, or is it? Um, disk metrics often look like this right, because you did clear those logs out or you did delete those files that exist somewhere else 
And if you draw a line, you're going to extend it that way, and it'll say that you're actually running to zero. Um, so what we actually want to do is draw several lines through the metric, and just take the last one and extend that. So uh, luckily, we have an excellent algorithm for doing just that. Uh, you can read an excellent blog post about it by Stephen Koppel. Um, and it actually has some pretty nice interactive graphics that you can play with, see how it works. So uh, in any case, uh, using our piecewise linear, piece linear regression algorithm, we can just draw the line you want, extend it, and give, the, give you the forecast you want. So um, there's going to be a demo station where you can check it out. Um, you can also sign up for the beta there and show you some other interesting functionality that I haven't covered here. Any questions? Um, do you guys have some sort of uh, feedback mechanism when you guys predict incorrectly, maybe update your models? Is there anything like that? Um, so our models always use the most recent history. So if it was wrong, it, or like usually what happens if, if there was like a level shift or something, it'll be wrong, right? Like for this metric, when was it? Like in around September 8th, we would have forecast that it was going to hit 100%, and we would have been wrong because you cleared it, uh, cleared out the space. Um, so then it, it'll update, basically. Um, yeah, we, we can't predict <laughs> things like that, so. On the sawtooth pattern that you had up there uh, off the blog, blog post, yeah, that one. Uh, the white, the white, that one. Um, can you set a threshold on the top end of the sawtooth? Uh, basically, we have a lot of logs that are constantly getting reaped, um, but we occasionally log faster than we were expecting and end up hitting like file system limits. Um, is it possible to, to do that? Yeah. Is it smart enough to know that, hey, you're going to hit your threshold this sawtooth? Um, so I, I didn't show this, but it's um, these forecasts are integrated with our traditional monitors. So you can set up a monitor where you set a threshold, you set a t the amount of time you want to be alerted beforehand before it hits that threshold, and then that's when you get your alert. Similar question, but um, for the anomaly, can you specify the upper bound and lower bound of when it would alert? Sorry? Uh, when you have an anomaly, like the anomaly type of alert, can you specify an upper bound and lower bound? For the anomaly type or the, this forecast? Or for the forecasting, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. You, you, okay. set, you set the bound yourself. Um, awesome. Maybe similar question to the previous one. Do you guys expose how confident you are on your metric? Prediction? Yeah, um, it's hard to see because I, I did the dark mode, but um, there's like a grayish envelope over that line, which might be impossible to see. But um, depending on how we're confi confident we are, it gets narrower or wider. Um, and so if we're not very confident, we're actually probably going to alert you earlier because we're not quite sure. And then that's also a tuning parameter of like if how. Um, and yeah, if you want to see this in, in action, just stop by the, the predictive alerting uh, demo station and you can see it with, uh, with a light mode uh, that actually has the, uh, has the bound around it. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, Homer.